before I go to Mr. Presepi. Uh, Mr. Beal, it is my understanding that you may intend to assert your constitutional privilege to remain silent. Is that correct? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. In the letters from September 23rd and 24th, I think my attorney advised the committee of that fact, and I will be asserting my Fifth Amendment privilege this morning. And is it my understanding that you have already, as earlier stated, you have already pled guilty to the charges before you? Mr. Chairman, I respectfully have to make the same statement that I am asserting my Fifth Amendment privileges this morning. Mr. Beal, today's hearing will cover the topics including the U.S. EPA, the Inspector General's investigation of your employment at the EPA as a senior policy advisor in EPA's Office of Air and Radiation. <clears throat> you were uniquely qualified to provide us testimony that would help the committee better understand your conduct while at the EPA as an employee. To that end, I must ask that you consult with your attorney, recognizing that although you have already pled guilty and, by definition, are not subject to prosecution for these very areas we are investigating, we do have a need to find out whether not you, but other individuals participated uh, or in some way aided in your ability to do this. Those areas of our investigations are clearly not subject to protection for you against uh, self-incrimination, but in fact are the legitimate requirements of government to ensure that this does not happen again. So I would ask you to consult with your attorneys as to whether or not you are prepared to help in this investigation or whether, having already pled guilty, you continue to assert that you would be incriminated from something you have already pled guilty to. Would you please seek counsel and then give me your answer? Mr. Chairman, could I ask the Chair a question? Uh, of course. Is there a, was there a written plea agreement between the government and Mr. Beale? Uh, they're, uh, under Federal rules, the uh, sentencing guidelines are not mandatory in a plea agreement, but he did enter one. Is there a requirement that he cooperate in that plea agreement? Is he I, looking for a 5K 1.1 or a Rule 35 at some point? It is my understanding that, he, that cooperation is part of the consideration for the sentencing not yet to happen. Is there a transcript of the, of the plea colloquy between he and the judge when he entered his change of plea? If the counsel can, can make us aware of that behind uh, Mr. Veal. It is my understanding that there is a transcript, but we don't have a copy of it right now. I can, uh, counsel, you are not sworn, but if you could answer the gentleman's question as a member of the bar, it would be helpful for us to dispense with this. Mr. Chairman, there is no 5K1 component to the plea agreement. It is a straight-up plea agreement that doesn't require any additional testimony or information from Mr. Beale. Did, did, did he receive a reduction in his guideline points for acceptance of responsibility? Uh, he did. Uh, was it the super acceptance or the two-point acceptance? It was uh, three points, two plus one. And is any part of that receiving a reduction in his sentence for cooperation that, that doesn't include answering questions when, when he's not in jeopardy in a congressional committee hearing? No. Uh, it, it only requires acceptance of responsibility as contemplated by the guidelines. Mr. Chairman, I'd love to have a copy of that plea agreement if we could get one, and I'm sure that other attorneys on this panel and non-attorneys would like to see it as well. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, uh, Mr. Gowdy, I'm going to direct staff to, uh, to get that. And obviously, uh, it's of our interest that the U.S. Attorney's Office not enter an, an agreement that would in some way allow what is occurring here to occur. Mr. Cummings, do you have any questions? Yeah, Mr. Boyd? Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to enter into the record the uh, uh, going to Mr. Gowdy, and I think Mr. Gowdy makes uh, excellent inquiry because I was wondering the same things. 
we have got the letter of September 23, 2013 from Mr. Kern, I guess that is his counsel, September 24, 2013 from Mr. Kern to the committee. And then this is a statement of the offense. I think we ought to have that as part of the record. Without objection, they will all be much. placed in the record. Uh, do you have any other questions? Quick no, I, I just, no, no, I don't. I do have one, one question, Mr. Chairman. To the council, 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 would you identify yourself, please? Yes, uh, John Kern on behalf of Mr. Beale. And so you, okay, fine. Is there any, um, you know, part of our problem here is that we are trying to prevent this from happening again. So there is no requirement anywhere for him to cooperate with anybody with regard to how he accomplished what he allegedly accomplished so that we can try to make sure it doesn't happen again? There is no, no requirement anywhere? No, there is not. All right. Very well. Okay. We will move forward and dispense with this. Mr. Beal, did you serve in Vietnam? Mr. Chairman, I respectfully decline to answer the question on the basis of the advice of my attorney to assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Mr. Beale, did you ever or do you now, do you, do you now or did you ever serve with the Central Intelligence Agency as an agent or an operative or in any capacity in which you aided the CIA? Mr. Chairman, I respectfully decline to answer that question on the basis of my Fifth Amendment privilege. With that, I have uh, no choice but to uh, relieve you of your position at the dais. Uh, we will escort you. You are subject to a, uh, a deposition, or sorry, uh, subject to a subpoena. So we are going to ask you that you remain and monitor the entire hearings from an ante room that we are making available to you, along with your attorney. It is the intention of this committee to seek your return for purposes of full disclosure. We will do so that so in concert with the U.S. Attorney and uh, and obviously the trial judge, and with that we'll take just a two-minute recess so they can reconvene, re reassess how the seating order is. Mr. Chairman, right. yes, just one thing. Uh, first of all, I, I, I'm hopeful, Mr. Chairman, that after sentencing we bring him back because then he's no longer in jeopardy, and we can get the kind of information that we need to assist in the things that you talked about a little bit earlier, making sure this stuff does not happen again, so that we can get as much detail as possible. Then he's not in jeopardy. So I'm hoping that he's, while he's watching, that he's aware that he will likely, and I'm assuming the Chairman would have no objections to bring him once sentencing is over. Well, as I, as, and I agree with the gentleman, and uh, the reason for him watching it is so he knows what is said here. The intent is to work with the U.S. Attorney's Office. I believe that the appropriate arrangement should be prior to his sentencing as part of his plea bargain. That is not my decision. It is not your decision. But we will seek to uh, work with the Court. As you know, we delayed this hearing until after the plea bargain in order to make the closure of this portion of the investigation for the uh, Attorney General's or, or for the IG's office uh, in place. But, uh, we will uh, we'll take this two-minute recess and we'll be right back. Thank you.